you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the equivalent resistance between points A and B, we're first going to have to combine these two resistors into what is called an equivalent resistor. So you'd have to ask yourself, are these two resistors in series or in parallel? And hopefully you'll be able to see that these are indeed in parallel, so we will have to use the parallel equation. So we could let R1 equal 10 ohms and R2 could equal 7 ohms, and then we'll try to calculate the equivalent resistance. Now of course to add fractions we would need to find a common denominator, but most of us are allowed to use calculators in a physics course, so I recommend if that's the case to just add these on your calculator. And if you do that you should get 17 over 70. And then there's a little algebraic trick we can perform here, and this works whenever we have one fraction on the left side of an equation and one fraction on the right side. What you can do is invert the fractions. So you're going to interchange 17 and 70 and then interchange the REQ and the 1. And once you do that the REQ over 1 can be simplified to just REQ. And then the unit of the equivalent resistance would be ohms. So what we're going to do is take these two resistors and we're going to combine them in essence and draw them as a single resistor whose resistance is 70 over 17 ohms. So there we have that equivalent resistor. Now we'll notice that we've got three resistors sort of aligned in a row and we want to ask ourselves again are these parallel or are they in series and in this case you'll see that they are indeed in series and so we can use the series equation to combine them into a single resistor. And with the series equation, we simply add together the individual resistances. So if we call this one R1, the next one R2, and the third one R3, we'll just be able to add them together to find the equivalent resistance. And again, I would recommend using a calculator to sum those resistances. And when you do it, you should get 291 over 17 ohms. And if you'd like a decimal approximation, you could just divide those two numbers on your calculator and you would get approximately 17.1 ohms. We'll end up using the 17.1 ohms. So what we can do is draw one more picture. This time we're going to combine the three resistors into one overall equivalent resistor. And here is the final picture of the most simplified version of the circuit. And we have answered part A. The equivalent resistance of the entire circuit is indeed 17.1 ohms. Now in part B, it's mentioning that a potential difference is being applied between points A and B. So effectively what that means is they're connecting a battery between points A and B. We can even draw it in here. And then we need to go back and calculate the current through each resistor. Now we're going to follow a particular course of action here, and this works well for all circuits of this type. And what I mean by that is we start out with a complex circuit, and then we boil it down to a circuit that contains just one resistor. And at that point, what we want to do is use Ohm's law to calculate the total current that is present in the circuit. Now, Ohm's law is traditionally written in this form, but if we divide both sides of this equation by resistance, we can see that delta V over R is going to equal the current. So what we'll do is we'll plug in the potential difference of 34 volts in for delta V, and then we'll plug in our equivalent resistance for the R, and that will allow us to calculate the overall current. And when we compute that, we get a value of about 1.99 for the total current that is passing around the circuit. Now that has a unit of amps. Now that's not yet our final answer. What we need to do next is work our way backwards back to the original circuit. And when we do that, when we work backwards through a circuit, we need to keep two rules in mind. So here are the rules. You probably want to pause the video and just look at them for a moment before moving on. The rules state that when we move backwards through a circuit, to a series arrangement, then we're going to bring with us the current. If we move backwards to a parallel arrangement, we will bring with us the volts. So as an example of how these rules work, let's go to our simplified circuit and let's move backwards to the so-called middle circuit. And we'll see that we're moving backwards to a series arrangement. And according to the rules, if we move backwards to a series arrangement, we're going to bring with us the current. So we're going to bring with us the 1.99 amps. That means that each of these resistors will have a current of 1.99 amps passing through them. So let's label that. Okay, so far so good. Now before we move backwards one more time to the original circuit, we have to remember to use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage. Notice that on each resistor we know the resistance and the current, but we don't yet know the voltage. But that's easy. All we have to do is take the product of the current and the resistance. So we're going to multiply each current 
by the respective resistance, and that will give us the volts on each of these three resistors. So there are all the volts on the, each of the three resistors. We've colored them in purple. Now we get to move backwards one more time to get to the original circuit. So when we move backwards from the 4 ohm resistor to where it came from, which is this resistor here, we'll notice that nothing's changed. It's still the same 4 ohm resistor. Well, that means that if the current here was 1.99 amps, the current here is also 1.99 amps. So we've actually solved for the current on that resistor. Similarly, if we work backwards from the 9 ohm resistor to this resistor here, which is where it came from, it's still the same resistor. So if the current on it was 1.99 amps down here, that means the current here is still 1.99 amps. But notice when we move backwards from the middle resistor to where it came from, it came from these two, which were in parallel. Well, we look at our rules, and if we move backwards to parallel, we don't bring the current, we bring the volts. So we're going to take the 8.19 volts that we had found earlier and apply that to both this 10 ohm resistor and the 7 ohm resistor. So for these two resistors, we have the volts and the resistance, but not yet the current. But let's recall that current is just the volts divided by the ohms, the potential difference divided by the resistance, in other words. So we just have to take the volts and divide it by the ohms to get the current. And when we do that for the 7 ohm resistor, we get approximately 1.17 amps. And for the 10 ohm resistor, we get approximately 0.82 amps. So we have solved for all four currents, the one on the 4 ohm resistor and also on the 9 ohm resistor, and then the two resistors we just mentioned. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.